Well, the good thing, you know, in Buddhism, the Buddha teaches us, you can see crisis. With mindfulness, you can change into opportunity. So a lot of young people now are tired of the mainstream education. They look for something alternative. And I'm one of those involved in alternative education. We call it same spirit in education movement. We help people to teach themselves. And the key in our education is you develop good friendship, Kalayana Mitra. Students learn from the teacher, teacher learn from students. We honest to each other, that's the first step. And then we expose both teachers and students to suffering in the world. If you come from the middle class, go to learn from the lower class how they suffer and understand structural violence. You are in the middle. And mainstream education teaches you to climb up to be on the top. But our approach is that we are in the middle. We must realize that we also, in the structure of oppressing the poor, we must go to learn from the poor and use Brahman Vihara, loving kindness, compassion, equanimity, such a like. So I feel that quite a number of, of, of Buddh young people have now come back to Buddhism not in a formal way, not in the Buddhist capital B, in a small Buddhist. Small Buddhist means anyone could learn to be awake. You can be Christian, you can be atheist, you can learn to be awake, to see that other people are as important as you are. We are interrelated. And other, not only human beings, even animals, the earth, in Thai we call Mother Earth, River, we call mother water, and to realize we are all interrelated. So, not a great majority, but many people among the younger generation come back to the essence of Buddhism. Not only in this country, we also work in Burma, in Laos, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, and particularly India. As you know, a lot of Indians untouchable, the lowest of the law, have now embraced Buddhism, started by Dr. Ambedkar 60 years ago. Ambedkar was an untouchable, but he was the most educated at the time. He got his PhD from Colombia, as well from LSC, he was called to the bar, but since he was untouchable, he was the lowest of the law. So he said he was born a Hindu, but he will not die Hindu, and he embraced Buddhism. And he felt that Gandhi compromised so much. Gandhi accepted the caste system. The caste system is very oppressive. You know, the Brahmin at the top, the Kshatriya, the warrior at the second, and you have the merchant class, and you have the, the bottom, Sutra, is the laborers. But worse than that, untouchable, beyond the, the four castes. And Gandhi compromised with the caste. And Mishka said, no, he will not accept caste system. And when he embraced the teaching of the Buddha, more than 500,000 people joined him. 60 years ago now, there are more than 10 million Buddhists because Ambedkar found that the teaching of the Buddha is their liberation. He said the French rhetoric at the French Revolution, they claimed for equality, fraternity, liberty. He said that rhetoric because the French used violence. After killing the king, soon Napoleon came, more and more violence. He said, where is the Buddha? Started the Sangha. The Sangha is alternative society from the mainstream. Anybody join the Sangha, either male Sangha or female Sangha, you could be son or daughter of the king, son or daughter of the prostitute. Once you join, you're all equal. And the Sangha used fraternity. But they love, sister love together, uh, within members of the Sangha, and they express that to the lay community. So, brotherly love is a key in teaching the Buddha. And then, members of the Sangha lead for liberty from great hate and delusion. So, Amit said that's the key for modern Buddhists to understand and to practice.